the old and the new. Well, I'm in Leith. And you know, isn't it getting very difficult trying to figure out how to cross roads these days? Cars, trams, bicycles, I'm looking left and right any number of times trying to get from one side of the road to the other. Um, anyway, as you can see, we've got a bit of a tooth issue here. I'm going for the Shane McGowan look. Front tooth's broke. Realistically, I don't think we can get a crown onto that, although the dentist is trying, but already the bits have come off that he's kind of attached. Um, so I think we're just going to have to get used to looking like this. Kind of quite fetching looking really, isn't it? Um, today we're going to look at, as it say, Leith, the main Leith, um, a mixture of old photographs and modern footage. At times I'll try and kind of compare the old with the new, but it's kind of not impossible to properly line up modern shots with old photographs. You can sometimes sense what kind of line the photographer in the old was on, but it's, you know, the state of his lens and how far away he was and stuff. So we'll do the best we can, but I suspect we'll be lucky if we even come close. And I think Leith, like most places, has seen many changes over the centuries. It's known for being a major port. I think when Berwick upon Tweed was sacked by the English way back in the old days, and uh, the English actually took over Berwick upon Tweed, which is now in England, strange as it may seem. And at that point, Leith became a pretty major port, or a bigger port than it had been before that. And it's been a port since the early medieval period. It was its own place, so in fairly recent times, it's become part of Edinburgh. Um, the changes, which are typical for any kind of town and city across the country, are the retention of some old buildings and the building of kind of modern, ugly things. Housing mainly. But I think just behind me is a good example of perhaps what I'm talking about. There's an old building here, and if I do my best to avoid the dog stuff that's just behind me, you can see the shopping centre just at the, the, the foot of Leith Walk. And this is uh, Kirkgate. And I think we'll get this video up and running by showing you what Kirkgate once looked like. And I think when you see this, you'll find it pretty hard to believe, given that what we're looking at just now. So, welcome to Leith. This is Kirkgate in 1925, at the corner of St Andrew's Street and Kirkgate, with Coatfield Lane on the right. The location is just in front of Links for Your House, the huge white multi-storey flats that exist today, and I have to say this old view looks far more interesting than what's there now. Parts of Coatfield Lane still exist but St Andrew's Street has vanished, its route partially followed by a small part of Giles Street. This is also Kirkgate, this time in 1895. There are some ancient buildings in shot, the one in the middle apparently being an old hostelry. The same hostelry is shown in a slightly different view, also of 1895, with two small boys up to something in the bottom left. Small boys were always up to something in the old days. All of Kirkgate and some surrounding streets and closes were redeveloped in the 1960s, 
to be replaced with an uninspiring concrete jungle. The old photo used with the titles in this video may also have been taken in Kirkgate. It dates 1909, but its location is uncertain. Certainly the baker in the background is a big clue. A John Miller had a bakery in Kirkgate. In fact, he went on to invent pan drops. That wee boy has a look of intense concentration as he throws what we presume was a coin in the hope of winning and gaining other coins. Moving down to the shore now, probably around 1900 or thereabouts. You can see the chain barriers at the edge of the Water of Leith in the bottom left, and they still exist today. Just look at the variety of shops and businesses. A veritable hive of activity. Wine and spirits, bakers, grocers and loans. Unfortunately, many of these lovely old buildings were demolished. There are a few exceptions. Everything on the right of the red line has gone, while everything on the left still exists and can be seen today. <laughs> Another view just along the shore, with a photo dating to around 1890. The building on the left, at the Berner Street corner, still stands, along with William Rutherford's pub and the building sneaking into shot in the top right. If we zoom in, there's a lot of guys hanging around. The pub looks open, so I'm not sure what they're doing, perhaps looking for work. If we move to the right, we get a clear shot of the hotel, the coffee and billiard rooms, the hairdressers and other shops in the row. We can get another clear view of the junction between the shore and Berners Street in this early photo dating to 1884. With the exception of the buildings on the far left and far right, all buildings in the photo still stand. Many old photos show children in the street. I suppose it was safer to play outside back then, maybe because there were no, or fewer, cars around. Here we have number 6 Queen Street, which is now Shore Place, in 1924. The buildings are clearly very old. They would have been demolished not long after the photo was taken, as part of the Edinburgh and Leith Improvement Scheme that sought to demolish then reconstruct certain areas deemed unfit for habitation. If we zoom in we can see a whole bunch of kids, one of whom is engaged in a death-defying gymnastic display. The girl in the bottom right is not posing for the camera. She is staring inquisitively. I dare say she is wondering wondering in the same way that I myself wonder at the things I do not understand. More kids in the street, this time in Cable's Wind, again in 1924. None of the children seem to be up to much other than staring at the camera. Cable Wind still exists, and as Google Street View reveals, is now largely modern housing in a boring white colour. Children at the Archer Memorial Fountain in 1895. These children come from a well-to-do family, as they have shoes and a little basket. I recall such drinking fountains, perhaps not just as elaborately arty as this one, they had a metal cup attached to a stout chain so no one would steal it, and the water was always cool and fresh. This fountain was in Henderson Gardens, at the corner of Henderson Street and Yard Heads, 
as can be seen in old maps of the area. Here we have an old, old house in Burgess Street around 1890 and a whole bunch of children playing with a wall. Who needs a swing park? The building, called Lamb's House, dates to the early 17th century and is a pretty good example of a rich merchant's house. This beautiful jumbly structure still stands. An interesting aspect of the old photo is the end of the lane on the right hand side. You can see a building with two arched windows, clearly part of a pub, as the word spirit is shown between the windows. That building, in Chapel Lane, still stands, and if you look real close in Google Street View, you can just make out the word spirit. I suppose they change the letters from time to time. If you look, you can also see what looks like the word wines. I suppose in the end it's spelt out wines and spirits, just the signs of a pub. But the longer you look at this image, the more words and letters start materialising. I think what happens with time is the oil in the painted words leaches into the stone and creates a ghost word, still there for us to see many years later. Moving to Leith Walk now, and a 1921 photo of the corner of Leith Walk and Smith's Place. It's an interesting photo, much the same, yet different, to the view today. It's 1904, and further down Leith Walk, men are laying tram lines. One hundred years later, they'd be doing the exact same thing again. A stunning photo dating to about 1912, taken around the same location at the foot of Leith Walk. Judging by how well people are dressed, Leith wasn't all bare feet and poverty back then. Many of the buildings in the shot still stand, including the clock tower of Leith's Central Railway Station, opened in 1903 and closed in 1950. Taken on the very day the station opened, here we see a train and men hanging out the train windows. Folk liked to hang out of windows back then, whether on trains or in tenements. No woman in shot, hanging out a train window was a manly thing. This photo, dating to 1970, shows the row of shops on Leith Walk with the redundant station offices on the first floor behind the arched windows. The main station buildings are in the background. Leith Central Station was a typically opulent affair for the period. Here, for example, is the gentleman's toilet in 1984, some 30 years after the station closed to passenger traffic 
and clearly now derelict. The toilet was demolished not long after the photo was taken, along with the whole station. For something as basic as a toilet, it's all very grand, with green glazed tiles, both plain and decorated. They knew how to build toilets in the old days. Many old photos that you come across simply show folk engaged in the serious business of living. Nothing too dramatic has been captured. Here it's 1924 and the entrance to Carpenter's Land just off Coburg Street, probably not long before demolition and improvement of the area. It's just folk getting on with their lives, lives that would soon change. For the better... Probably. Improvements would certainly be high on a list of life's priorities for these women, collecting water in Sandport Street in 1924. There was no water inside their homes. This was where they got it, outside in the street. It's not hard to see how much of an impact certain improvements could make to people's lives. This view of St Ninian's Row shows just how ancient some of the dwellings and parts of Leith were. It's 1930, and again the water supply for the properties can be seen in the bottom right. I'm not entirely sure where St Ninian's Row was. Canmore has it off the shore, but a St Ninian's Lane exists across the water off Coburg Street. Of course, as a major port, Leith wasn't short of a bob or two, and the area contains a fair number of grand buildings, like the Assembly Rooms, opened in 1787 and captured here in 1941 during the Second World War. Also, the Town Hall, opened in 1828 and seen here in 1870. The building is now Leith Police Station. Dismitheth and all that. I mean, you only have to look along Berner Street, like in this view of 1880, to see that it wasn't all poverty. The dome on the left is part of the Leith Banking Company's building, opened in 1806, and the same view today really hasn't changed that much. Of course, as a major port, Leith needed to defend itself. Edward I had already sacked Berwick in the early medieval period, killing around 15,000 of the town's inhabitants in the process, and taking control of both the town and its port. But whatever Leith's defences were in the centuries that followed, they were not enough to stop Oliver Cromwell's army marching into the town in the mid-17th century. Cromwell was keen to protect his newly acquired asset, and so a fort, known as the Leith Citadel, was constructed in 1656 to allow Cromwell's commander, General Monk, to control all imports and exports at the port. Later, in 1660, when the monarchy was restored, the citadel was demolished. All, that is, with the exception of this one arched entrance in Dock Street, seen here around 1912. While the building above it has been demolished, the arch itself can still be seen. Given that Leith was a port, there are quite a few images and photos showing ships. Charles Thompson's 1822 map of Leith shows a green and pleasant land, along with drawings of ships. In the background, you can see Carlton Hill, Salisbury Crags and Arthur's Seat.
perfect way to end a Donder and Leith here on the shore in Malton Hops. Lovely pub. Well that was Leith in the old days and maybe today as well. It was kind of almost impossible for me to take meaningful comparison shots because there's been so many changes or things in the way. Although you never really know till you get home and you sort them all out. It's nice to see that all the, the turmoil of the, the tram building down Leith Walk and in, in Leith itself is now finished and the trams are running. I mean that went on for I think years and it must have had a major impact on many retailers. But thankfully it's all the building work's gone. In Glasgow, we are awash with construction and building work. Sucky Hall Street, you know, it's just gone on for way too long. I'm not entirely sure what they're doing, creating cycleways and God only knows what else. But in the Charing Cross end of the city, there's, there's huge sort of tower blocks getting constructed. The whole area is one mass, massive construction site. And a couple of days I passed through and uh, noticed, I mean, I mean, there's barriers all over the place, cones, construction work, scaffolding, guys with fluorescent jackets. Whole area is a building site. Yet in this one little area there was a sign, just a tiny wee sign, saying something like, caution, construction work ahead. It just, it just seemed such an unusual wee sign because the whole area was a construction area. But on the other side of this we sign with two young guys working. And as I passed them by, I said, that's a very important wee sign there. Because from a distance, I thought you might be baking cakes. But one of them did, didn't quite understand what I was talking about. And I had to kind of sneak off with my tail between my legs. <laughs> But you know, all the the work that's gone on, whether it's, well it's finished here in Edinburgh, we've got trams and the cycle lanes get built in Glasgow. It's getting more and more difficult these days to figure out just how to do something as simple as cross the road. I was trying to cross the road here in Leith, you know, there's a cycle bit, you think cyclists. Then there's a bit cars can use and there's also trams. Then you cross over and it's the same again. It's a tram bit, but cars and uh, the cycles. I like got left, right, left, right, left, right, umpteen times. It's a very dangerous place out there just trying to do something as simple as cross the road. When I was young, you would advise just to look right, left, and right again. But that just doesn't cut it these days. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you again. I'm Eddie Burns. Bye for now.